Live Laugh Larceny discusses true petty crimes that may be disturbing to some. Or could be easy listening to all you psychopaths out there. All stories are based on actual events. Eh, but details may vary. Listener discretion is not advised. Welcome to Live Laugh Larceny. When you see your cat's butthole more than your friend's face. <laughs> this is Trevin. And I'm Amanda. <laughs> I know I laugh every time, but that one was really, really funny. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was just the sad reality, you know? Oh, yeah, it's my sad reality. Like, I'm glad I see you weekly, but I'd much rather see your face more than I see <laughs> these dancing buttholes all week. <laughs> so, Trevin, yes. what is your dreadful dilemma? My dreadful dilemma has to do with one of my dancing buttholes, mm. and that is my cute Mabel dog. Okay, what's she up to now? Because I heard you lecturing her right before we recorded. She is going through a phase of needing to eat the cat food all the time. Mm. But my main dilemma is this. Emily and I have been having to get on to her a lot more lately. Okay. And I've watched Emily, and it's so funny watching her kind of raise her voice and be like, No, that's bad dog! And it's like, I don't think you know how to get angry to where she's worried about it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we had already gotten onto her a couple times, and I heard her get out of the shower and start to do it again. No, that's bad dog. And then I hear Mabel run downstairs to me. Well, I knew what needed to be done there. <laughs> It's like, I need to make sure that she knows I mean business. Mm -hmm. So I bring up the low voice and I'm like, Mabel, no. <laughs> In which I just got her to jump up and come over here. Sorry, puppy. Which I just heard that upstairs yeah. as well. So I'm just trying to make sure there's a big <laughs> boom that goes on with the shame that comes with what she's doing. Because, you know, it's sometimes it's not just the words we use. Yeah. But how we say them. exactly. So then I had this dilemma and this thought, and maybe all of our parent listeners can help let me know if this is true. I thought, do you have to train yourself as a parent to use the voice a certain way? And then does that just eventually become who you are? When you first tried on the mom voice for size, mm -hmm. was it kind of a character at first that you had to get into? I'm going to be real with you, Trevin. I feel like I have always possessed the mom voice. Okay. I feel like I've been using the mom voice since I was a small child. I can I, see that with you. I feel like the mom voice for me, it was never really anything that I had to practice on because I was kind of a bossy kid. And then I bossed around my boyfriends. And yeah, I've just always had the mom voice. I've always been practicing. And then pets and then kids. Yeah. It's like the job you've been dressing for <laughs> forever. You finally got it. Everyone has the voice within them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you do have to definitely change it up for kids when you mean business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like for me, that's going to be a voice that I'm going to have to train myself to use. And it's going to be very foreign to me at first. Oh, yeah, because if it's anything like that theatrical ass shout that you just gave her, yeah. a child would laugh you out of town. I hate to break it to you. Oh, my God. I need to do like where stand up comedians go to small places to practice. <laughs> I just need to go and lecture a bunch of toddlers somewhere and just do it until I can get a good tight five. You or know? you can just practice on mine. That's fine. <laughs> like, girls, honestly. Scale from one to ten. How intimidating was that? <laughs> oh, I don't need any more judging from Lila. Oh, that's a good one, Trevin. I also have a dreadful dilemma. Mm -hmm. Recently, we have been checking out trampoline parks as mm. a form of activity to do as a family unit. Which and looks very fun. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Have you ever been to one? No. Okay. Okay. I've only been to two. It's not something you can do all the time. It adds up. But I've gone to one with Lila at a birthday party. Jordan went once with Lila when I was out of town. And then just this recent weekend, we went all together. But my dreadful dilemma is that in these three experiences that we've gone, we had to buy special socks for these places. 
It's not like they're anything magical. They're just socks with little grippy things on the bottom. It helps them from slipping a mm-hmm. little bit. They're all themed. Or One of them has like really intense neon colors. And one of them, like the one we just got this weekend, was a Christmas themed sock. Okay. So can you bring your own grip socks from home or does it always have to be what they're selling? That is my dreadful dilemma. Okay. I was like, that's weird. From what I've gathered, if you do bring yours in, mm-hmm. it has to be theirs. So each time we've gone to a different place so we had all these socks we didn't try it we didn't try to be like can we use these from another place like you never show your face here yeah again. yeah yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't even go there i think it's just kind of like an unspoken thing mm-hmm. because they were like you must have and then they had their names socks to jump right wow so every time i go to a place i have to buy new socks and then what happens trevin if i say oh let's go back to this one we already have socks for what happens if I lose one? Can I just hobble on one leg? <laughs> Maybe buy one that was left there or something. It's like the wrong size. But do you see how this could be problematic? Yeah, it's almost like your membership socks. Yeah. Unless you just want to always be like LL Cool J or whatever that never wore the same outfit twice. Just keep buying brand new socks every time you go. God, we're just going to have like a whole drawer of trampoline socks. It's going to get really weird. At least they're stylish, it sounds like. They are. They actually are. Hmm. And good grip. So, Trevin, this week we are going to be sharing some killer facts. Hello? We traced the facts. They're coming from inside the house. And before I do that, I just want to say we got new art. Oh, my God. How did we not talk about this yet? Oh, my God. Yes. So last week's episode would have been the first one to show the art, but we didn't talk about it. Yeah. But yes, we got new art and I absolutely love it. It's something that just really reflects the chaoticness of our stories in image form. Oh, my God. It's so damn good. When you found this artist and you were showing me some of his work and some of the concepts, I was really excited. But in my mind, it was just really hard for me to actually envision it being a working thing for what we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. But somehow, some way it is. And I think it would be really, really funny and entertaining if any of our listeners could go around and notice all the little things and see if they could get the inside jokes for what each item is. Does that make sense? Did I explain that? Yeah, like some of it's setting up the scene and some things do call back to our own show. Yeah. Like you said, it's like a Where's Waldo of petty crimes. (laughs) Yeah. Originally, I wanted it to be so much more, but it's like that would not make sense to be so cluttered. Yeah. But no, I think it's still really easy to read and so fun. So I'm so excited about the new artwork. Oh, my God. And that will lead to new merch. Yes. I want to stare at this for a little bit and get some ideas and then go from there. And I want to get our merch to other countries, guys. I am working on that as well. Yes, that's definitely a priority. So for my killer fact today, I want to talk about a singer from back in time, Barbara Streisand. Oh my, okay. Are you a fan of Barbara Streisand at all? I mean, I feel like everyone has to at least be kind of a fan, right? Yeah, she was Ben Stiller's mom in Meet the Fockers. Even if you didn't even know her music, you've probably seen her in the movies. Iconic. So did you know that Barbara Streisand cloned her dog and now has clones of her dog? No way. I'm going to be going off a few different articles here, and I think there's like two main ones. So first one is uh, New York Times. Okay. She said, I was so devastated by the loss of my dear Samantha after 14 years together that I just wanted to keep her with me in some way. It was easier to let Sammy go if I knew I could keep part of her alive, something that came from her DNA. A friend had cloned his beloved dog, and I was so very impressed with that dog. So Sammy's doctor took some cells from inside her cheek and the skin of her tummy just before she died. We sent those cells to Viagen Pets in Texas, and we weren't even sure if it would work. What ended up happening was not only did it work, they had made like four or five dogs based off of her dog. So do they start out as puppies? I think the way it works is they like make eggs off of it, and I think they impregnate another dog as like a surrogate. Oh, okay. So that's how... So they have to be a puppy and then grow like Mm -hmm. a normal dog. And they said that they basically are like clone their DNA, but the personalities aren't the same or anything like that. Wow. This is a real thing that people can do. It's got to be super expensive. I mean, Barbara Streisand probably has a lot of wealth, so I could see that it's probably off the chart expensive. But I don't know. Tell me the numbers. What do we got? Luckily, this other article is also from New York Times. So this is really helpful. Oh. 
There's a place that first started it, then they charged $100,000 per attempt. Oh my god. This Viagen Pets in Texas says they charge $50,000 for the cloning, or $1,600 to merely preserve your pet's genes. Oh, okay. So she paid $50,000. And that's per attempt? They seem more like they're just saying $50,000 straight up. We'll right. make sure we get you one clone. Oh my god. Okay, so I guess I just didn't know people were just cloning their pets so willy-nilly. Right, and now I'll give you a little history on that. Okay. So from the same article from New York Times, it says, We can clone dogs since when? Let's answer this question. Even if you are not a close follower of clones, you may recall Dolly the Sheep, who was born in 1996. That was the first cloned animal that we made a big deal about, I guess. Since then, researchers have cloned about two dozen other mammal species, including cattle, deer, horses, rabbits, cats, rats, and dogs. South Korean researchers announced that they had cloned a dog for the first time in 2005, after almost three years of work and more than 1,000 eggs. With help from a yellow Labrador retriever who served as the surrogate mother, a cloned male Afghan hound named Snuppy was born. Snuppy stood for Seal National University Puppy. By 2008, a California company had partnered with South Korean Laboratory and made plans to auction off chances to clone five dogs. Later that year, the New York Times reported that their first three puppies from the group had been born in South Korea. The South Korean lab had cloned more than 600 dogs in 2015. Now let me ask the scary follow-up question. How many celebrities or like rich people do you think have their DNA stored and ready to be cloned? Oh, many, I bet. Oh my god! I bet Tom Cruise does. Oh, God, yeah. He would be the perfect candidate for that. So this is just really that simple. You take their DNA, and then you just need a surrogate to grow it. Mm -hmm. That is really quite alarming to me. Scientifically, that's a huge breakthrough and very cool, but like... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it really just so actors can never have to lose their dog? Is that why we made this breakthrough? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, what is the need for it? You know, mm -hmm. animals reproduce if they're not spayed or neutered anyway. This is just really weird. Yeah, I'm sure when the scientists did that, they thought, ah, oh, this will help our capitalist endeavors. We're going to just clone rich people's dogs. We're abusing science. Yeah, seriously. It just seems like a huge, gigantic breakthrough, and it's like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. But she ended up getting, I think it was a litter of four or five dogs. And at that time, she didn't think that it was going to work, so yeah. she had adopted a different dog that came from the breeders that was actually the cousin of her old dog. Oh, my God. So she has the dog's cousin plus two clones of it. And then she had a couple people that worked for her, like her A&R rep wanted a dog. So two other clones actually belonged to friends of hers. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, just no. And PETA also got really mad about all this and was just like, well, we shouldn't be cloning these pets because there's a lot of animals out there that don't have homes. Right. And I thought, is the adopt don't shop going to eventually turn into breed don't clone? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess breeding might be better than that one. Oh, my God. And like, what if two of the clones fall in love? What kind of DNA could get mixed up there? Maybe that's when you get the original dog back. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Wild. Like I was telling you earlier, glad I changed my killer fact. Mine was going to be about bringing the woolly mammoth back. Different, but still a little too close to home. Maybe another day, everyone. But I learned a lot about that. <laughs> so I also have a killer fact. A couple of websites that I kind of gathered a bunch of different stuff, all that's interesting, Wikipedia, there were a couple more, but I combined it. It's a Frankenstein thing that I created here, okay? So I want to talk about a really bizarre occurrence that happened. It happened August 21st in 1986. There is a lake and it's called Lake Nyos and it's in Cameroon, Africa. Now, this isn't just a normal lake. It is actually a volcanic lake, which means, you know, it was created in the crater of a volcano. So the water's not hot. I think it is. I think it's like warm water. I don't know. They didn't really get into that. <laughs> but check this out. On this day, the lake experienced a rare limnic eruption. Research found that the carbon dioxide had built up under high pressure in the lake. A landslide into the lake may have caused the gas to be released. A volcanic eruption under the lake might have also been the cause. They're not completely sure how that part happened. Mm -hmm. 
But the result was that the carbon dioxide burst out of the lake and into the air, poisoning those in its path and then dispersing. Uh. This tragedy actually killed between 1,700 and 1,800 people and 3,500 livestock in the area. Just from this burst of carbon dioxide into the air. I was thinking you were going to say like 15 people that happened to be close to it. No, no, no. This ranged, I actually have this written down here. It suffocated the people and livestock within 25 kilometers or 16 miles close to the lake. Oh my God. Since this tragic accident happened, I wouldn't even say it's an accident. It's kind of like a natural disaster almost. But Mm -hmm. since it's happened, a degassing system has since been installed at the lake with the aim of reducing the concentration of the CO2 in the waters and therefore the risk of further eruptions. This limnic eruption, though, is really, really rare. And Mm -hmm. this is only one out of two recorded in all of history. I have so many thoughts about this. Yeah. I read a bunch of different articles about it and kind of tried to compile it all. So basically, I know that it was talking about the bubbles in the lake were kind of helping it. So I assume it was warm, right? I mean, it's bub- bubbling. It at least it's got in warm a volcano. at that point. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, something happened and a bunch of that just burst into the air. What's insane to me, and I didn't write this down, but there were a couple of people that survived. And they kind of came to after a few days of like just being under Mm -hmm. and like being unconscious. And it was really sad because they woke up and everything and everyone around them was dead. Okay, so one thought. I want to see what one of these look like. Obviously, they probably don't have it on video, but I'd be interested to see what that looks like. Me too. They said that the lake became an eerie dark color afterwards. That almost sounds like a spooky, like a little Twilight Zone episode or something. Dude. Was it a creepy ghost town for a while? Because you would just be walking into a place where everybody's dead. I know. That's insane. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was thinking was if you did want to repopulate that town after setting up that thing that's supposed to help with it, it would still be so hard to sleep thinking that like any moment, you know, what if the stuff they put in place can't fix this? I know. It's kind of like a Chernobyl-ish situation, but Mm -hmm. like a natural thing that's you know, it's happened. like it should be safe to live here as long as the lake plays nice mm-hmm. a lot of the articles i read just the way that they described how finally a few survivors came mm-hmm. to and a few people had visitors like within the next days so like people discovered the town but just finding that i couldn't even imagine yeah they did say it also took a couple days for like insects to like come back to life in the area too so this whole thing was like really really weird but Yeah, me personally, I don't think I would ever want to live there again. No, that's so interesting. I want to watch like a documentary about that. Me too. Me too. I wonder if they have one. Because yeah, I mean, they came and I guess at first they thought, is this a virus? And then the researchers went and they found the water. They noticed it was like a really weird dark color. It was a whole thing. I would love to see that in documentary form. Like, this is what we did. This is what we saw. What the hell? Yeah, even just being caught up in that moment, in the questions, they wouldn't know instantly that, oh, the lake just turned on us. No, they said it took a while to be like, oh, could it be this mysterious? Serious dark water. Okay, how did this happen? So I'm glad they eventually found out, but damn. Well. So let's listen to some ads, everyone. Hey, everyone. I'm about to play a trailer for our friend Ashley's podcast, That's So Fucked Up. If you love the weird and bizarre facts we share, you'll love this show. Help support more independent pods by giving her show a follow. This is That's So Fucked Up, a podcast about cults, murder, and other fucked up stuff. Like, really, really fucked up stuff. He tore out her heart, tied it to a rope, and hung it on the wall. Fucking sharks ate Mark under the dinghy. After his dad dies, he fucking marries all his dad's oh, wives. Oh, yeah. He, like, marries all his stepmoms. <laughs> I'm your host, Ashley Love Richards. Find That's So Fucked Up anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's fucked up. And we are back. With it being my week to go first, I am pleased to present this story to you. Oh. You know, I was getting myself psyched up because 
next week is our Christmas episode. Correct. That's our last episode before the big holiday times, whatever you want to do during that time. <laughs> I have days off of work, so I'm celebrating that. Hell yeah. So I was like, what kind of story do I do before we go into that? Mm. I had a breakup episode. I had a love episode. What do I want to talk about? At first, it was like, it's going to be a good one. I have a good feeling about it. But then when I got into it, the writing of the story, something I'm trying a lot of different things. Oh, wow. And I'm just letting you know now that you are going to be playing a pretty big role in this. Oh, exciting. Okay. Yeah, you got to use some energy for my story, too. I'm jumping right in. So enjoy. There may be a connection between my killer fact and the story. And here we go. It has been well documented that human sole purpose is to reproduce. We're born into this world with our genes screaming at us to find someone to rub our slimy bits together with until a baby eventually shows up. A baby that will undoubtedly pick up on all your flaws and grow up to have complicated feelings towards you about them. Made me this way. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I don't want to focus on the biological side of things. We all know that some people are in relationships that cannot have children whether it's because of couples' genders or medical issues that can leave someone infertile. Instead, let's look at the emotional and psychological sides that surround the decision to create a life. What an incredibly big commitment to make. I still have a hard time wrapping my head around it. Doesn't the Earth have enough humans already? Can I handle all the emotions this brings up for me? What if my kid grows up to become a car person? These are just a tiny example of the things we ask ourselves. The anxious foresight we experience in those moments makes frightening possibilities feel like a nightmare that we will inevitably have to live. Especially the car thing. There's not much worse in the world than that. Or, what about the world you would be exposing this new life to? The world is a big, stupid, scary place. It's literally the only planet I have ever been on, and I can confidently say, it's not my favorite. Of course, Mother Earth isn't to blame for this, but the people are. Anything bad you can think of, the world has it. A 40-hour work week, politics, and neighborhood cats that won't let me pet them. All of these things are creeping in the background of our day-to-day, -day, just waiting to pop up and hurt our feelings. And yes, I blame people for the moody cats on the street. If every person that cat met loved it as much as I do, they would undoubtedly want to be my friend. Do you really want to bring an innocent life into this world only to subject them to these things? My final aspect that I want to touch on is what makes you so special? Did any of your parents ask yourselves this when you were considering creating a life? I still can't eat foods that require dipping without wearing some of the sauce. Oh, shit. Am I the right person to put a little bit of my teachings into our future? Do I deserve to harness the power of a god? Today's story will follow a person who answered yes to this question, but they will soon find out that giving life has consequences. Chuck? Hello, it's me, Upper Management Man Mr. Chuck. How are you doing, Linda? I'm doing fine, Mr. Chuck. What do I owe the pleasure of this video call today? I see on the online portal that your employee, William Bright, is currently clocked in and on schedule. Yes, sir, he is. Would you mind bringing him into the office real quick? Corporate has me running some routine questionnaires with new hires. Sure thing. Let me go get him. We are never, ever, ever getting back. Oh, oh. Yes, Mr. Chuck? I can't seem to find William. It's not like him to be missing like this. Like this. Linda was a 35-year-old woman living in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. As GM of the local Wendy's and a single mother, she knew the importance of resilience and hard work, especially in the year of 2023. Since the rising cost of living and seemingly lowering of wages, Linda had plenty of friends that were turning to crime as a very lucrative side hustle. There was Danny the Downline Distributor, Do you want to join my MLM? Sarah the Scalper, Cheap tickets over here. and Celia the Civic Leader. Every girl's brunch, the three took turns swapping stories of how they scam people out of their money. While Linda, she would sit silently. That sure sounds like a lot of fun. Linda would quietly add reminding herself of her existence 
before sinking back into her seat. She was always the less fun one, but being the first to have kids made her miss some of the good stories coming out of their party era. Oh my god, she shit on the floor! The FOMO of those days still lived on inside her, like a ferocious cat just waiting to be uncaged. The life of crime just wasn't for Linda like it was her friends. However fun it seemed from the outside, was the lifestyle of nice cars, fancy clothes, and a more open schedule worth risking jail time over? Linda often pondered this question during dinner rushes or holidays she had to work. The fact that working at Wendy's was legal in the US and it afforded her bills ultimately made the decision for her. Linda returned home from the babysitters with just enough time to get ready to go to work. She grabbed her mail from the mailbox as she unlocked her front door. Sifting through the various political flyers and internet company ads, Linda came across a letter from the plot device daycare. She paused and thought about the reasoning for the letter. Her children have been going to the plot device daycare for years, and she's never received a letter from them. With a death grip from her two muscly fingers, Linda tore the letter open to read its correspondence. Your bill is going way up, and you can't ask why. Pay us a lot more money now, or you won't be able to afford childcare. She couldn't believe this bit of financial news. Her current income wasn't going to make this work. She was either going to need a second job or a better job altogether. Later that evening, Linda was working in her office, taking in an adequate amount of breaks to internally scream into the void. Why me? She slowly scrolled down her Outlook inbox, accepting training webinar invitations and deleting junk mail from Burger King recruiters. One more new email and she would be able to scream into a bald sweater before getting on to her next task. The email was from Linda's area manager, Mr. Chuck, with a subject line that read, Good news. She opened it and read on. Good news, Linda. Since those three employees quit three months ago, and you've been running with a short staff ever since, we will grant you permission to bring in one new hire to replace them. It is important to us at the corporate level that you feel supported. That is why we came to the decision to give you one new hire to replace your previous three paid laborers. We are very kind people, and you should like us for our caring spirit. Thanks, Mr. Chuck. P.S. Sorry for the delay. I saw your emails begging for help, but me and the senior VP came into a little extra money over the last three months. One thing led to another, and we sort of bought a yacht. I'm sure you understand. Linda sighed to herself. In any normal circumstance, this would have been a great email to receive. Her current staff was about to revolt if they didn't get more help, so this employee was at least a band-aid for the gaping wound in her directory. She scrolled through her phone, thinking about the rising inflation and her current predicament with plot device daycare. No memes or garage organizing videos were going to distract her from this sense of dread. Just as she was going to put her phone down, its notification sound went off, revealing a text message from Sarah the Scalper. I just sold a dad and his daughter two heiress to a movie tickets and told them they were concert tickets. Easiest 8K I've ever made, cry laughing emoji. What you doing? Linda put her hand on her face looking over the inspirational corporate posters in her cluttered office. The cat hanging from the branch helped her hang in there, while the photo of the millionaire climbing a mountain in thousands of dollars in safety gear showed her that she too could overcome impossible odds. You've got this, Linda. She nodded to the poster as if it gave her the perfect idea. She knew how to fix all her problems and gain a fun brunch story in the process. Linda opened Microsoft Word on her out-of-date office computer and began to type up a resume for the perfect employee. He was not too young, not in school, had no gaps in employment, came from a physical job, and was a Pisces, so you knew he had a sensitive soul. She sat back and marveled at her creation. The perfect man didn't exist, but if he did, this would be his application. I'll name you William, she said, printing out the application and signing a signature completely unique from her own. With a name and an official signature, William Bright was born. She placed his application in a new blank folder and started the hiring process. A few scheduled formalities and forged documents later, Linda had a new employee in the Wendy system, equipped with her Cash App account as his direct deposit. Pacing the entire process perfectly, Linda was able to avoid all suspicion. William was scheduled around times that she worked, so she could conveniently punch the employee's time card when she did her own. Everything was working out great. Mr. Chuck would conveniently miss William when he stopped by, and lower-level employees continued to flounder but complete the job, sinking further and further into a state of employment-induced dissociation. We need help. Their comfort was Linda's sacrifice to make. 
Ten months had passed, and Linda was living large, with the additional part-time paycheck coming in. The plot device daycare was taken care of, and Linda was able to afford a few new things of her own, while finally leading the conversation at her crime-based brunch club. What up, my fellow criminals? She was living the dream. Everything was going according to plan, until one day Linda received a voice call from Mr. Chuck. Oh, hey, Mr. Chuck. Sure thing, let me go get him. She got up from her seat and quickly walked out of her office. Fuck, 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 what am I gonna do? She said to herself in the empty hallway. She paced back and forth, breathing heavily. I'm just gonna have to make up an excuse and fire him later. This has gone far enough. Linda walked back into her office and sat down in her chair. Yes, Mr. Chuck? I can't seem to find William. It's not like him to be missing like this. Mr. Chuck shook his head, visibly showing his disappointment. I knew it was you, Linda. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. In July of 2023, 35-year-old Wendy's general manager, Linda Johnson, was arrested for creating a fake employee and funneling their pay into her Cash App account. The employee known as William Bright worked 128 shifts in which Linda clocked in his employee time card. Through 44 weeks of bi-weekly checks, William grossed an income of $19,898.15. According to the Daily Voice, during a video call, she did admit to adding William Bright as an employee on paper and creating shifts for him, while also explaining the direct deposit scheme. On July 20th, Linda became a wanted woman, eventually turning herself in on August 8th. She was arrested on a single charge of theft by deception and released on a $2,500 bond. No updates were given on what the final punishment was. According to PittsburghCriminalAttorney.com, in most cases, theft by deception involving property over $2,000 is a felony of the third degree, punished with up to seven years in prison and a fine up to $15,000. Creating a life is a huge decision that should never be taken lightly. No matter how ready you think you are, you'll run into some surprises. From their first steps, to their first jobs, and all the way up to their first felonies. The gift of existence that you gave will go on to create more energy and memories on this earth. So if you bring a life into this world, give them the good values that you wish this world had now. Don't be like Linda and immediately sign them up for a job right after they're born. That's no way to parent. Oh my god. (laughs) You totally threw me for a loop. Between your intro, me being Linda, Mm -hmm. thinking in my heart of hearts, maybe Linda was just the innocent bystander role. Yeah, you thought William might have been the bad guy? Yeah, 100%. I felt like this story should be a Tarantino story. Like it should start in the middle or in the end and come back to No, I loved that so much. Yeah, you filled in the gap of me leaving. It completely changed how I felt about the whole thing. Yeah, you know, and this is kind of my week where I don't put as much into the story because I know I've got my Christmas thing coming up. Yeah. And you know what, guys? I'll never sacrifice narrative quality for you. I said, this has to be Tarantino. I don't care how weird it's going to be, but we're going to make it work. No, it was so good. Oh, my God. You handled that so perfect. I almost had forgotten that we were going to be coming right back to that. And then when it happened, I was like, oh, my God. Duh. So, so good. Gotta say... Kind of an ingenious way to make some extra cash. Yeah, I think that's boss babe material right there. I know. I get it. It's wrong. And mm-hmm. they probably, well, definitely could have used someone else, it sounds like. So kind of shitty for her to do. But my God, innovative. You know, there's that show, that podcast that's really popular, Scam Goddess. Oh, yes. She would be perfect for Scam Goddess. Oh, my God, would she? I wonder if they ever talked about her on there. Oh, my God. I don't know. Because it's kind of a recent one. You oh, it is recent, yeah. July of this year. And then how long did you say? I mean, he worked a hundred and something shifts. 128. So it was a 22 bi-weekly paycheck. So it was 44 weeks. So oh I, that's why God. it said about 10 months. Wow. Come on. She was able to hide this from everyone for that long? Yeah, that's so innovative. Ah, like her higher up should feel like the dingling. Yeah, Mr. Chuck's a real fool on that one. <laughs> 
I really didn't make too much stuff up. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if the workers were like really needing help or not. I was just kind of inserting my own life experience in there. Mm -hmm. But I would think that for corporate approval to hire somebody, there would be a need for another person. So I just assume they were probably a little short staffed because of that. Or what if she was just so good at the whole thing of manipulating and hiding things that she was like, oh, we desperately need another person. And they really didn't. Yeah. They said that when the quote unquote Mr. Chuck character, Mm -hmm. whoever the Wendy's person was, they would stop by and be like, oh, hey, Fry Cook, you know, a guy named William that works here. And they'd be like, I heard about him, seen him on the schedule, never worked with him. That was like them kind of asking questions already building up to it. So they had her found out. Imagine what if she just would have been like, oh, we fired him. And then she just kept that 19K and it was like right before they discovered her. And she's like, sorry, we had to let him go and actually hired a new person. That's what I'm saying like i would have made that work a little bit i couldn't have let it keep rolling Mm -hmm. like she did 10 months maybe three and i think by three my anxiety would have been too far oh my god i don't even know and it's not even that much money i I mean really to put yourself in that much danger i know i guess she was probably thinking i'm going to do this forever but god that is not a viable situation i guess that's why they call you a dumb criminal dumb criminal it is innovative i'll give you that but execution wise pretty dumb nope but i loved it i loved it too trevin oh my god Well, I also have a story for you all today. My story this week is also very, very recent and from the news. Mm. It's also an extremely viral story, too. I had to do some interesting research in order to properly write this, and I'm really excited to talk about that at the end. Yeah, which you said it went viral, and you're like, oh, don't use this crime. And I thought, what are you talking about? Now you're telling me everybody knows it, and I am somehow don't know what this is. Yes. So Trevin hasn't heard of this one that we know of. Maybe you have. I don't know. But this is a new, new crime. I kind of gave him a vague location and was like, okay, don't do any recent crimes you've heard. But no, it's gone pretty viral, Trevin. So. Oh, so I'm curious how many of our listeners have already known about this. I hope there's a lot, but... Let's just jump in and here we go. Have you ever gone too far before? I'm not talking about taking an extremely long road trip. I mean saying or doing something to the next level, ending in regret. Perhaps you've thrown in one last unnecessary jab towards your partner while fighting. Our mailman had less baggage than you. Or maybe... Instead of enjoying one piece of chocolate, you devour the entire bag. I don't feel so good. I'm sure we've all taken at least one thing in our lives too far. And today's petty criminal is no different. Only, this story affected the masses and has gone viral across multitudes of social media platforms. It has burned the eyes of anyone who has stumbled upon one of the provocative videos and has permanently scarred those that witness the chaos in person. Thus, becoming a compelling display of how one person taking things too far can damage the lives of many. Rosef was a 26-year-old bro living in California in 2023. He could have appeared to be a normal person and blend into any crowd he wanted, yet instead, Rosef had a nasty habit of taking things way too far. He sped far beyond the legal limit, flirted with anything that walked, and gave himself a full makeover once he discovered 70s fashion. Rosef did everything over the top, so his appearance was no different. He styled his hair into a disco perm, rocked the typical 70s serial killer glasses, and squeezed into the tightest jeans his ass could fit in. Because of his overzealous take on life, Rosef wasn't surrounded by many friends or family. They found it to be much too difficult to keep up with the extreme highs and lows. That is why on a lovely California day, he found himself all alone at Disneyland. The typical visit to Disneyland was never going to be enough for Brosif. That is why he brought his own stimulants to kick things up a notch. 
In one of the bathroom stalls, he opened up his bag full of drugs. Debating on if he wanted crank, crack, or crystal, he gave up deciding and ingested them all at once. Quickly after, life as Brosif knew it changed. Once ordinary walls sprouted faces that scolded him for not flushing the toilet. Mickey Mouse ears atop park guest heads transformed into devil horns. Even his reflection in the mirror looked like Brosif belonged to the correct decade. It was in that terrifying moment that he knew he had taken things too far. He stumbled out of the men's restroom, desperately looking for an exit out of his bad trip, when he spotted a doorknob. Brosif grabbed the doorknob for dear life and twisted, falling into a dark corridor. He laid on the floor for a moment, trying to process where he was, when he heard echoed distortions of distant singing and flowing water. Thinking that the sounds felt positive, he followed the rhythm. Rosef had no idea he was entering a torturous maze. His mind was spinning as he looked up at the dark dome of a structure lined with speckles of multicolored lights. The sight almost took his breath away. However, he quickly regained it as he realized this was a funky dungeon belonging to a fleet of miniature animatronic creatures. There were tiny pirates rowing angrily in unison towards him and a large head with beaver-like teeth chomping angrily before him. He thought he had seen it all until a pack of the smallest dancing blonde women he had ever seen twirled by him robotically. Each creature singing the same cultish lyrics about being in a world of fears. Brosev forced himself to continue walking through the creepy cave when he noticed he wasn't the only human inside, but these humans were circling around him in red boats, watching him as if he was their form of entertainment. Hey, look at that guy. Brosev's body became hot and clammy as he started climbing over windmills and under monkeys to escape their gaze. No matter how hard he tried to escape, he felt there was no way out. Finally, he had succumbed to the heat and began removing his sneakers, maroon skinny jeans, and shirt. Wearing nothing but his boxer briefs, Brosif decided to take a break and sit down crisscross applesauce. He closed his eyes behind his wire-rimmed glasses, hoping this was all a bad dream. But opening his eyelids, he found himself smack dab in the middle of a miniature robot party where everyone was wearing white and gold besides him. The small party goers scowled at him as their flute players rocked back and forth in swift motions, continuing the eerie lyrics. In order not to offend them any more than he already had, Rosef removed his boxer briefs, which were neither white or gold. But as soon as he had completely stripped down, the circling humans did not approve. It really is a small world. Just when Brosif felt at his lowest, he heard an animalistic grunting behind him. Turning around, he was startled to see a couple of purple hippos with large blinking yellow eyes. Brosif frantically climbed over small cacti and ducked under magic carpets to get away. Out of the corner of his eye, he swore he could see Lilo and Stitch surfing. Mahalo. But he was too afraid to look. He dove into the water, which held the red human boats, and tried to remain calm. He drank some of the mysteriously dark water, and then saw something. Hey, you fucker. It appeared to be a police officer at the end of a lighted tunnel. The next thing Brosif knew, he was being carried by a group of uniformed men. Each grabbed a limb like he was the bare naked holiday hog about to be roasted on the fire. He realized that not only was he carried out of the dark hell hole he was trapped in, but out of Disneyland completely. 
On November 26, 2023, police were called to Disneyland in Anaheim, California, just after 1.30 p.m. Inside the park's It's a Small World water raft ride, an unnamed 26-year-old man was scaring other riders by removing his clothing and climbing throughout the attraction. Megan Carmona was one of the disturbed passengers, stating, We noticed he started climbing onto the different parts of the ride and that he was undressed. He looked out of it. He didn't look like he knew where he was. He looked worried. My friends and I had seen him and it looked like he was going to jump on us. Once he got to a different part of the ride, he ended up walking into the water and started drinking the water and ran off towards the entrance of the ride. The ride was shut down for about an hour as guests waited for the nude man to be captured. He was eventually carried out of the park by multiple police officers, each holding one of his limbs. He was taken to a hospital as a precaution and was later arrested for indecent exposure and for being under the influence of a controlled substance. Because this is a newer story, that is all the current updates given on the matter. Perhaps even I have gone too far for even sharing the story with you all today. But if it can prevent just one of you from making a crazy far out choice, then it's worth it. With bizarre videos going viral, it's easier than ever for people's bad choices to spread around the globe. After all, it really is a small, small world. I definitely didn't know this crime. You didn't okay i could have sworn you would have i heard it on the radio i heard it on a pop culture podcast actually two of them oh wow and jordan brought it up to me he had heard it too so funny when you're like in the thick of it so much you miss some of the obvious stuff i guess (laughs) i know it was such an obvious one that i was like oh god he's gonna take it from me i know it no but no okay okay i went down a rabbit hole, kind of like Alice in Wonderland. I had to do a lot of research. I've never been to Disneyland. I have never rode that ride. Oh, I I assumed you had. No, I've been to Disney World in Florida, but I've never been to the original Disneyland. I've never been to any Disney. Oh my God, we have to go. (laughs) I've been to the Disney store. Does that count? No, it doesn't. I took a virtual ride through online, just on YouTube. You know, it was Mm -hmm. just like, take a ride through. It's a small world. And so I did that. And it was a recent one shot in full HD. I got a great look of everything in there. I'm going to have to probably do that too. Oh my God. It was actually kind of creepy, kind of fun. So I had it on my computer screen and I was like taking notes of what I was seeing, you know, Mm -hmm. and it was just all kind of like jumbled, like scary things to be honest but it's a child's ride Mm -hmm. i mean it doesn't move very fast it's literally like a little raft ride and it's just a repetitive song and this is not something you have to include on your end but because this was such a recent recent crime Mm -hmm. they were playing the it's a small world song in the videos but they were also breaking it up with like jingle bells in between and stuff so it wasn't how it is when you take the virtual ride it's it's a small world on freaking repeat my dude but in the tiktok videos of this guy it was either that song or like jingle bells and stuff so there are tiktok videos are they very great i'm actually gonna give this person's account a shout out i found this tiktoker named mole man Okay, and he compiled all of the footage that different witnesses took, and it had everything together of everything that I had seen individually, Mm -hmm. plus more. So this guy found all the videos and like compiled it into one. So thank you, Mole Man, for that. Yeah, you are the man, Mole Man. (laughs) I was able to watch it, and a lot of this story I didn't make up, guys. Now, I do want to say, first and foremost, I don't know what drug he was on. Mm-hmm. I don't know his name. So, gross if it is. I just know his age and that he was clearly on something hardcore and <laughs> looked really frightened, a lot of the guests said. But in the videos, he starts off wearing clothing, just kind of walking around. Then people find the maroon pants, the black shirt, the sneakers. He's in his boxers for a while. But there's people like angry parents on these boats with these kids. There was like a dad that was like, get down 
town, you know, lecturing him. I thought this was a family place. Yeah. And people are like, you're going to hurt yourself. People are like shouting at this guy and he's just like wandering aimlessly, just stripping off his clothes. Wow. So it definitely wasn't like a lighthearted, fun drug. You know, he was in another scary world and I was trying to do my best of describing what I watched on the virtual tour Mm -hmm. compared to maybe how scary that would be to somebody on drugs. I wonder if the Florida Disney manager called the California Disney manager and just like, how's it feel? He's like, it's always a Florida man. Yeah. Not today. I was going to say, we really don't get a lot of California crimes. And that's probably why this guy is unnamed because they probably have pretty good rules about releasing that information yeah but because it went so viral it's like they can't avoid it getting out dude and he really did look like he was trying to be from the 70s okay when you guys when you see the pictures i'm describing him exactly how i saw him i mean i tried to be as accurate as possible but also trying to skew it in a weird (laughs) drug-induced way yeah which it really is kind of fitting that he would be a drug guy if he's dressing like he's from the 70s Mm -hmm. you know our show's kind of like playing a game of two truths and a lie like you don't know how many lies we're gonna put in the story but like (laughs) when you were going off on that he's like oh he dresses like he's from the 70s and i thought okay yeah this guy definitely did like i don't think amanda's just building a dumb character who feels like he wants to dress like he's from the 70s like yeah (laughs) because then at the very end we do explain yeah it's kind of surprising some of the stuff that isn't the made-up stuff a lot of this story you guys is not yeah he was in the section a lot that had the magic carpets and the monkeys in Mm -hmm. so i made sure to put that in there a lot of the videos i saw of him he was like sitting in that area and they were trying to get him to stay and then he would get up and walk some more but I didn't see any videos of him in the water or drinking the water, but I've heard that in multiple articles and a witness saw it. Ugh. But that water probably has motor oil from the track of the ride in it. That's what I was thinking, yeah. And who knows what the hell else in there. I guarantee you somehow pee got in there. There is pee in it. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know why. But he shouldn't have been drinking that water. Ugh. Oh my god, do we have a connection? You know, I was thinking, I haven't finished last week's episode, but I think you and I completely missed it. I don't think we did connections. I will cut this out if we did, but I don't think we did. Oh, okay. But connections, yes. One little connection I can say is we were a little different this week. Your story is going to cause a lot of extra sound design and fun stuff because yours is very atmospheric, which Mm -hmm. is going to be nice. I did the whole Tarantino thing. We did some change ups. Yeah. We always try to keep it fresh, so I don't want to. I know. We can't even put that on it. They were both recent. Yeah, this is an odd one. I really can't think. I don't know. Maybe we'll just have to give this to the people. Yep, this is a people pleaser. But regardless if there wasn't a connection, I really, really enjoyed both of our stories this week. Very unique. Yeah, I think these are going to come together really nicely. So before we head off, we just wanted to say that next week is our Christmas episode, our holiday themed episode, whatever you would like to call it. Mm -hmm. And after that, guys, we are going to be taking two weeks off. We will be trying to still have some things pop up on the feed, maybe some new shows to check out. But we are not going to be taking any time off, guys. Yes, we might enjoy... The holidays with our family, but we have a lot of things we're going to be building towards that time. Yes, trying to get ourselves caught up and hopefully we can get back to making videos on the socials and maybe some bonus stuff for you all too. For sure, for sure. Good things on the horizon. So I hope everyone's having a great week. And just remember, no matter the crime, big or small, in the end, we're all doomed. Doomed to clone our pets. (laughs) Bye. See ya. Do you have a drawer of trampoline socks at home? If so, let us know. Thanks for bouncing around with us this episode. And would you ever consider cloning your dog, assuming it went down in price? Find us on social media and let us know. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or Threads. And have you ever tripped out at Disney World and caused pure chaos? If you have, send us your petty crime story, livelaflarceny at gmail.com. And review our show wherever you review podcasts, Apple, Spotify, or Good Pods. Tell us how much you like the new art, too. I know that's a five-star job.
So I'm glad they eventually found out, but damn. Well. Wow. <laughs> 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 I'm like thinking how to transition us out of this. <laughs> you hate a transition, don't you? Um, well, it's like ads time now. <laughs> oh, that's usually me. It's usually you, but you don't have to. Oh I can God, do it. Oh my God, Trevin, I'm so sorry. You were over there panicking. I thought that <laughs> for some reason I was still waiting for you to keep on with another fact. Okay. okay, I need to get a grip. So let's listen to some ads, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the best I've got? <laughs> no wonder you were like, how do I do this? <laughs> 